I don't do that. Yeah, it's, um, I hope you're disrespectful to Father Nord. And I don't get to disclose any information about this lady, but uh, she's got a kind heart. She's been destroyed, you know. Was even in the legal field, and and uh, she had a former husband as a sociopath narcissist that just destroyed her. Like I got destroyed by Janet James, my former wife. What I gotta say is that even Jesus, she's a prostitute. It's okay. I explain why. Jesus even accepted Mary Magdalene as a prostitute. You know, and uh, forgave her for her ways. I can't judge her because she's been through so damn much. And I'm almost crying because she's been through hell and back. And I don't know if she got a different type of job or not in the society. And uh, what's hard about that is it's like me. I can't get a job. I've been shut down by Satan, evil forces, Illuminati, and all this. And people say, God, why does he have a job? And I'll be honest with you. I considered being a male escort at one time. Luckily, the Father and Lord, the Holy Spirit, made the situation where that wouldn't occur. Because I was so broke, I was so desperate. I was like, God, I got it. I got it. You know. And I tried to find ways to do that, working for, you know, cleanly, without sexual intercourse, just like listening to ladies who are divorced, um, elderly. You know, not elderly. Just, I shouldn't say elderly. Just older than me, even. Okay. And uh, there's even a guy who gave me a number to Madame in Loma, Colorado. And I seriously was like, geez, you know, got to have that money because I'm broke. And I, mean, I can't get a job. My records have been destroyed by Janet James. Like her, her records are shot. She can't get a job because of her former husband that did false domestic violence cases. Same story as me. She had no damn options. And I used to think, my God, there's always an option. But I can understand. You're trying to survive. You're trying to keep your sanity. So I said, we drink in this, this hell hole. The Lord said, don't you judge others, Kirk, because you chew tobacco. Yeah. And I did some stupid sins myself that the Father, the Lord forgave me for. I did some dumb things. I want to repeat on this video. I've been drinking one time. I said, God. And one time I did some, I was so lonely and I was looking for somebody to provide that comfort and that soulness. And I did something stupid then. I violated the temple of God and violated that individual in a way that I, I think about it every day. I want to go on about it. I was like, God, why have you done this? And, uh, you know, and I regret it. So I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry, Lord. We're supposed to be clean as a whistle. And uh, well, anyway, thank you, Father and Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit and the angels for where I didn't end up being a male escort. Like I said, I was just going to listen to the ladies. And I thought, hey, you could take a advantage, justify it, right? I said, well, I can talk to him about God and the Lord, and, uh, you know, instead of maybe having to have sexual intercourse with them. And I was like, well, how am I going to handle that? Where they say, hey, you know, let's have sexual intercourse. And I'm like, well, I'm just an escort for listening and nothing, and I'm throwing a little spiritual swing on it. And that's probably what the last thing I want to hear, that sometimes their husbands just die and they're lonely. They said, gosh, I need somebody to talk to. The guy who told me said, ladies just want to listen to Kirk half the time, but uh, he said there can be times where they want that love and romance and I think, so you got to play that part. And I mean, could you, I didn't even think about the time that made you take that option and disclose that, say, hey, you know, I'm just an escort there to take you on dates and restaurants and have a good time and like I said play music and but no sexual intercourse but then you're always going to be faced with that situation where they might expect that right say well he's just covering it and all these other things but anyway let's get back to what I was talking about you never disclose her she is the only one then I had a couple people on the way to the road I had nowhere to stay you said Nowhere. Nobody let me in their home, like Jesus said. 
you got was when I was homeless. What he meant, just not him. He meant your brothers and sisters are homeless. Did you help me? Very few. I think I got helped. The missions sometimes, but those are her- terrible things. No showers and listen to coffee and the noise all night. And, you know, and the churches where they rescue. You're basically just outside in the open. And uh, <laughs> very little shelter, very little home. Sometimes you got food, somebody didn't. One time in Chicago, you don't sleep in a I think Chicago, I'm not sure, in a mission, in a chair, a plastic chair, sitting up all night. I said, we just sit up all night. He said, the game is not to freeze, not to sleep. He said, normally we just stay outside because this place is so miserable. The showers were filthy. The toilets were not flushed. And that's how the Lord would have been treated in those days. Even one church, I said, they had a thing on a calendar. This guy goes up to church. It looks like Jesus Christ, but not kind of like him. And he goes, I need some food. And shelter, I believe, is on a calendar like a month. And they said, sorry, we can't help you. <laughs> and I felt like the same. I said, God, nobody's going to help Kirk. <laughs> so I know we're talking about me, but I mean, I understand it now. And this lady, you got to love her. I'm actually, and I hope I'm not showing you anything because I can watch this because I got hot till my back's hurt. And last night I slept in a hundred and some degrees, sweating all night, up seat, sitting in the driver's seat, trying to get sleep. And then the noise, because in the casino parking lot at Circus Circus, because they knew the police wouldn't bother, they would bother homeless. And they, they don't care because money is coming. They said, oh, well, geez, we'll let him sleep here because he's probably going to gamble. And uh, so you always got to pay for even your shelter and your home. But then I was still worried about it. I said, my gosh, they're going to wake me up. So I was half the night wondering if somebody would knock at the window. It's going to be the police or the security saying, we're getting you out of here because you're sleeping in the vehicle. That was fine. Then the weather condition, I mean, geez, it was like, I woke up at 2.30. I think it was, let's see, about 2.30. I woke up at 3.34. And then the sunroof was broken on my Suburban. So I ended up, you know, so I can't close it. It's jammed. So you have a choice of trapping the heat in you. Or opening it up so you have a little air current. Well, it had very little. Uh, but anyway, so then these flies come flying in there, bugging me on my skin, waking me up. So I've had like three hours of sleep last night. I'm exhausted. It's 4 o'clock now. But anyway, um, what is crazy about this is I er, earlier had parked inside the garage. There was no cameras back at the night shelter, but there was no movement in that garage. It was like being baked in the oven. So I moved out side where it had a little air curve but then it had the flies early in the morning the noise is lighter because people it's a main entryway in the, in the circus circus are you kidding me so um anyway it's not about me so i talked to you because a lot of brothers and sisters have stories just horrifying just a nightmare compared to what i've gone through i mean we're talking being sexually abused and still hanging there with the father and lord god bless them i kid me they're being witnesses to getting people arrested for their rapery, their naughtiness, taking the punishment. There's one in Nashville that he just got destroyed by beaten, abused, head dashed in. You see it, and it's terrifying. God bless him. I hope God can help him and honor his situation because he's stuck in, even homeless on the streets after being raped over and over again from foster home to foster home. Are you kidding me? That's a life that we got to honor. I almost have to honor it myself because, man, I'm telling you, God, broke my heart. Man, I said, can I place that situation from me? But see, don't judge God for this. This is man's free will, and God can make that correct. He will, and God will also, because this man was witnessing and making making those people have a, see, we can't flush out the good and bad completely flush. Unless they, they be, these situations occur, like Hitler and these other ones. And also people can be saved through these processes. This gentleman's probably saved through the process, but you know, people have through war. Like I said, there's no thing, same thing as an atheist in a foxhole. So, you know, don't judge those things, and God can make right for those that stuck it through. So never give up on God. And I apologize to you, Father. I apologize to the Lord and our ancestors, angels, I mean. 
I have cussed and chewed and bitched and said, geez, where's God, this and that. I said, Lord, do you even care? I said, geez, is there any love? <laughs> and they're real. And I honor that for them. And I know it's all going to be good. I probably pushed the limit too far sometimes and didn't trust God enough. So I'm sorry, Father, but you got to realize there's so much confusion in this mess that all of us are like, what is happening? Where's God? Where's the Lord? And the Lord has helped me, and so has the Holy Spirit, and so has the Father. It's been a team. I just can't see it all. And I, every time I look at these bad things, good things happen like this. I'm witnessing a prostitute. Shouldn't he call her that? It's inappropriate. Helping me, Kirk. Like I said, I had an atheist one time who cared about me and said, give me some shoes. And there, Kristen walked by me, didn't get crap in like two minutes so I'm trying to get in a Walmart. I'm not to judge, but they love one another. Are you kidding me? An atheist shows more love one another this individual. He said, I love you, brother. I have no religion. Oh, <laughs> God. And I don't know her situation. I didn't bring it up. I said a little things about Christianity, and I let her go because in my heart, she cares. And uh, she didn't have to let me in. What is she? You know what I mean? We talked about some lies. She knows the truth. She talks about, oh, Jay's a filthy sucker. Murder, double murder. She knows about all the bullshit, the court systems, are lies. She knows that your public defenders are pretenders. She knows that the judges are paid off or threatened. Even public defenders can be, even if they want to admit it. And what I had earlier didn't even believe in God whatsoever. Are you kidding me? So, and I've got to make this long because this is amazing to me. That we have an individual that, I, that most of you can judge her immediately and say, oh my gosh, you know, blasphemy. You kidding me? Blasphemy to all the Christians, all the others, the Buddhist, the Islamic, the churches that said, I have a membership to you before I can get help. You need a membership with God and the Lord. Are you kidding me? And, well, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. Sometimes I want to move so much and trying to figure out what the heck's going on tomorrow. We turned to Jesus Christ and said, well, you got to sign. I'm not Jesus, but you sign up here and we'll get back to you tomorrow. I went even in Flagstaff, hoping somebody could help me with some gas. Uh, Catholic thing. It's not their fault. They had food sitting outside, drove across town. And they, they're only there between 3 and 5, couldn't make it. They said they were supposed to, no, they were supposed to be there between 4 and 5. They already gone at 4.10. Now, they might have had stuff they wasn't aware of and this, this, and that. And they're probably trying their best, but you're kidding me. Not a note, sorry. Uh, well, I think there was a phone number call here, maybe with those channels again. Sometimes people need emergency help. You can't even knock on a door. I told you, a, a Christian lady said, man, I can't believe the doors are locked even for the virus. I said, I had an emergency. I couldn't get a hold of the church and call them. Don't get a response. You know, and I've had it so many times. I call, church, hey, can you help me out? And she never get a response. They didn't know who you are. You're kidding me. You don't serve God when you're shutting doors down. In this virus, you don't lock the doors. So the people need you the most. And the dads these churches say, well, we're following the laws of evil and man. Open the dang doors. Because the prophets would have said, and Jesus was like, you kidding me? Like the temple, when he had to come in there and said, what are you doing the temple for, for the Father? He got angry. I don't know if he got angry or not. There's, it doesn't matter. I would have been angry. And if he's angry, you kidding me? It's passion. He said, what is going on here? Your churches are doing the same thing. Joel Olstein, it's Olstein now, said Olstein by Mandel Effect. Are you kidding me? Joel Olstein shuts the doors when there's a leak in a bathroom. There's a flood in Texas. We sit comfortable in a million dollar house with a pool. My goodness, does pool get flooded? You kidding me? Locks the doors? Guy makes millions of dollars. I would have sent millions of dollars and sent some help to those people. Don't give me your God's favor. 
How do you know it wasn't your favorite ones by God? Are you kidding me? Well, and then he tries to justify it. That's all the crap. Another sheep and wolf clothing. It's true. We lost the churches. Even when the closest churches I know, not mention names, never lift a finger to help me whatsoever, even baptize me. Great people. Are you kidding me? Knows, I told him that we're into revelations. Get ready for the Lord. I ignored that. Said, oh, Constantine had the same issue. This is today, not back when Constantine was around. Wake up. Quit looking back at history. Look today. The Lord said, be watchful like a thief in the night. And none have been watching like a thief in the night. They're watching what's ignoring it all. So knowing some truths. But not digging deep enough. And I don't know what's going on there. The churches I trusted. I mean, I had some more help with, uh, well, some other churches on the way. With the, the Mormon church and talked to the, the local uh, bishop and the president. They, they, they turned their thing. Well, can't help you get a job. Good luck. We'll clean up your record. Maybe if you clean up your record, a little bit of advice. Never call, hey, follow up. Hey, you doing okay, Kirk? I'm loving you, brother. You want another? A local bishop. Now, the family is nice as heck like everybody else. I'm sure he's trying to take care of his family's situation, this mess. But it takes you 10 seconds. Hey, are you doing okay? Let's get some resources. Got millions of dollars here sitting at the Mormon church. And we know that you're working with God and the Lord because we've heard some of your words. And uh, there's anything we can do. Got a, a guy that's in Boise, Idaho. They gave him $10,000. You know, it's called, uh, whatever that is, till, or to whatever the heck it is. It's called put it in my pocket. He ends up having to make a mortgage payment. He goes to the church. Mormon goes, Hey, uh, can I get $1,000 to make my mortgage payment? I tell them, sorry, no refunds. No refunds? That man needs your help? $1,000, do I need to ask for all? He said, so I'm done being a Mormon. You're kidding me. We've all been witnesses. They said that there'd be two witnesses in the plaza. Everyone is a witness for God that says, what is going on here? we all been witnesses if you're on the good side. Even Brian Staten with the Mandela effect, he's like, He's a witness to the garbage, the lies. We're all witnesses. All of us. We're witnesses of the filth, the hate. I'm witness to the prostitute that helps more than Mormon church. You kidding me? That's why I'm going to bring up to listen to her. I'm a witness. She's a good person. So, Father and Lord, I hope you can, you know, do something for her. I feel bad. I've offered her money. She says, no, don't worry about it. I'm being comped by the hotel. <laughs> I want to cry. She says, don't worry. I didn't offer to have some. She went down to, you know, do some things, you know, to have fun. I said, you need some more? She says, no, I got it. Good. Good, Kirk. What? I've offered. I couldn't get a drink of Coke because it's so expensive here. It's like, God, five bucks. I, they only have the right ones in the vending machine, the ice machine. And then uh, down the stairs. Vegas ain't what it used to be. It's all about money. It's worse. God, they want eight bucks for a drink of Coke. You got to tip the people. Sixteen bucks for two Cokes. Sixteen dollars. The employees are not probably making, you know, I wonder what the minimum wage is here. I think I heard in Nevada it's nine fifty. I think it's in the federal. I don't know. Nine fifty or nine bucks? You are kidding me? He probably lives off those deep tips. And I'm like, Gee. I said I got to keep my my money because I'm tight. And uh, I know God always provide, but I made some excuses because I'm trying to survive. And he said, don't worry about the tip. You just go sit down and act like you're playing. Until they could mine and give a $5 tip. I said, I'm sorry. You got to. You can't afford the coat. Take the $5 for yourself. And she, his name is Vicky. He said, okay. He said, I'll come back through Cokes. Then there was a sister downstairs. I told her the truth, who I am and what I represent. I didn't want to cry. I said, you know, I was here 25 years ago, and I didn't realize this is going to be like this. I said, I don't want to be working for the Lord, the Father, and the side fighting. I said, I've been shot, kicked, punched, beaten on the streets. I said, 25 years, I had memories, not even really thinking about the spiritual. Now I see so much here, it makes you want to puke. I'm awake. It's evil. The sun's coming up and I'm exhausted. 
$50 so I get to sleep because I get out here by 10. I'll sleep in a tree. And I wanted the fourth to be the best day because my dad, so I want to have some sleep to honor freedom, to honor the Father, all our ancestors, that everybody that died and fought for thousands of years, even before those times, we got to honor the glory for God. And I'm sorry they're wasting time here talking about it. you got to let my words be heard. Because we've all played that part. I want to cry. We all have done the best we can, Father and Lord, as well. Angels, I know you did your best. And I don't hate you, Satan. Father, i got to forgive them all. I told the Lord, Tom, thank you. Tell the Satan, thank you, Lord. Tell him, thank you for making me the best and kicking the crap out of me. God, let him have enough loose chain to just, and so the Lord, just to make me the best. Thank you, Satan. I know it's blasphemy. Thank you for helping me become the best. I don't mean the best. I'm not trying to be egotistical, but making me the best person I can help the Father. There's a lot of bests out there. They're all, we're all the best. Team Dad, we all win a trophy. Number one, God in heaven. Number one, Father. That baseball team, you, you're the coach. You're the coach. I got chills. We're the players, the pitchers, the catchers. The first baseman, the shortstop, the second, the third. The whole thing's knowledge of baseball, even seven inning stretch. And then the nine inning, the game is over. I hope that we're in the seventh inning stretch, Father. Let the last two innings, or the Lord, the Father, all together on a baseball field, like the field of dreams, that we get to see our ancestors and play ball. I've been begging, let's play ball for so long. Let's play ball, Father, Lord. Let's play ball. Let the umpire yell it through the universe time to play ball finish it up hit the home runs every one of us we're going home we're running for the lord we're running for the father all the way to home base even if we have to slide even if our thumbs are broken like happened one time even if we've been punched and kicked and beaten and insulted on the field hey batter 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 swing the bat strike you out you didn't strike any of us out because we call foul ball on everyone that was naughty. We said foul ball on you. No more strikes. They're all home runs. You stay focused, you relax. Let God throw that ball. Control it when that pitcher sends it. Because he's the one that holds that target. We hold that, that bit. We're the pitcher that throws that ball on target. You get those people in the right direction, every one of us. And we throw it at them now. They're on the defense. It's our turn. It's the bottom of the inning. We throw the ball. And the target, that catcher's mitt, we give it to God, the Lord, the angels, to make that be a perfect strike right down to that catcher's mitt. I can see it in my head. Strike one, you're out. Strike two, you're out. I'll be out yet. You got one more chance, no more balls. And we're not even gonna hit foul balls. Strike three, bam! Batters out. The Queen of England, Trump, Angelica, Illuminati, all of you. <laughs> Strike out. You lost the game. If this is success, I'd love to see failure. We need to get topside. And guess what? There's just one problem. Most baseball All games, the clock is always ticking, but we don't know exactly hey, on the third know. strike, the time that ball is released by God. He knows exactly when. Father, yeah. let that pitch roll. You control that ball and visualizing it. 
I don't care if it's a curveball, straight, down the pipe, and whatever that is. A slider. Three fingers, Trinity. Three fingers. Those three fingers are pointing to that home plate, that catch, that batter smith. Not at yourself because you have nothing to blame yourself. Three fingers in that baseball you got on the seams. And you throw that ball and let her rip. Sir, when you're ready. Because we're ready. Batters out. Game over. Every screams and shakes and loves. We said we did it. Fill the dreams. Fill the home base. We coached our children. The coaches above our ancestors coached us. Didn't always hear it. There's something that also, if I to tell as head coach, I just realized. I don't know if it's Holy Spirit speaking through me. Well, my thoughts does not matter. We used to say there was training when we were practicing for baseball as head coach. I mean, what we see is this is kind of to teach you the rules of what's happening out there. They get dropped in the water. So look to those young gentlemen. Understand the rules of the game, what how it's played, learn how to hit the ball, and I put everybody out there as a pitcher, what I could to make them learn what their experience was. And I don't want to hear that I'm not a pitcher. You get out there and see if you like it. And I played the games at that time, right? So why are you putting out there? God, that's our worst pitcher. Give him a chance. You might have got a hero. Hear from myself and God. There's a story I can tell you about it. About uh, Ray from Colorado. Went to Alaska, a motivational speaker. They had a sled dog that was slow as crud when he was behind. He put in the front. He ripped it. He said, boy, quit holding me back. I need to be a leader. I need to be the pack. He gets the pack going. So he gave me a chance. I love it. I'm out in the front. You be those lights. We be the ones in the front, all of us. Ride that sled as fast as you can. There's a ton of analogies. Anyway, let me back to this. About the, these kids, these young gentlemen. So, we would take the rules, do practice, how to curve out of first base, to be getting out. That's like you dodging Satan or just walking away from evil sometimes. Sometimes you got to face it kind of head on to learn and just slide into that first, yeah, first or second base. You're going to get a broken finger or, you know, hey, you got the batter, say, hey, batter up, batter, 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 batter. Bantering you. Then you got unfair umpires, unfair people, judges, politicians trying to destroy you. You're like, God, what kind of calls that? Where's his eyesight? Where's his vision of God? I can't see God. If he's blind. Are you kidding me? God's right there in the outfield with us and floating around, and you guys don't see it? You're kidding me, umpire. It was a perfect strike. My God. And the person who threw the ball. Because a lot of times it's just that person I spent a minute. A strike, that person put it their heart and soul into it. You call a ball versus a strike? And sometimes we deserve that strike. We kind of, well, why miss it? Wait, geez. <laughs> Boy, that was a strike, but, you know, that, hey, 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 Empire, that was a ball. So sometimes we made mistakes. But sometimes we do it for protection, you know, trying to justify the beans. Anyway, so tell these gentlemen the rules. Now, the, the rule that we had when we went out to the game was this. We didn't coach whatsoever. We said, we told you the rules, like the Bible, the laws of Moses, or whatever, love one another, which is very important. We told you the rules. Go out there and play. And so we slightly corrected my Lord, the Father, bump us, hey, Kirk, you to cut off course, or hey, sister, you out there, your brother, we're going to bump you on course. We didn't try to make a big deal. I was just, hey, you know, just do this. We told you about that practice. And then, so you, we would bump, you know, we try to just stay out of it. Just, just let them play the game, because that's how they're going to learn the bats. Get it, learn. They're going to learn on their own. The Lord, the Father, took the time. 
They said, God, Kirk, we're not going to walk for you. You got to walk on your own. You got to walk this journey on yourself. You got to take those steps. We can't carry you. Maybe they've learned how to walk unless you do some of this yourself. They told me this. So that baby will be crawling the rest of its life. We're going to help you and try to lift that baby up, but you know, that baby's got to walk on its own. So I get it. And I get, I get, I get these, these young gentlemen. I said, I can't tell them exactly every day detail of what I'm doing as a coach. Sometimes we you know, we'd tell them to ignore the score. And they'd say, Coach, oh my gosh, we're down nine to, they're beating the crap out, it's nine to zero. And I said, hey, the score is zero, zero. Just play every pitch, every ball the same. Ignore it. Even though it's seventh inning or eighth inning or ninth, and we're, we're, I, I knew we were going to lose on that game. I'd say just ignore the score. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. And guess what? We were like the bad news bears. Oh, my gosh. They'd start hitting. Boom, 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 boom. Seven runs. Oh, we only got two more. Bam, bam. Two runs. Teams are like, you got to be kidding me. Where these kids come from? Because they had hope, faith. They said, we're not giving in. I don't give a crap what the score is. That's the position we're in now. We look like we're losing. We got tanks in the camp. It's, oh, my gosh, we're losing. And I did the same thing. The blasphemy is if I would have been a coach, oh, guys, geez, we're going to lose this thing. Look, they're beating the crap out of every one of us. That pitcher, geez, get him off that field. Oh, my God, two outs. We're done. Wait, we just we won the game? I had a coach scream at me, want to punch me in, uh, on, uh, was that Erie? Or was it, no, it was Loma, Colorado. Comes running. He's, he, I'm standing there on third base, and we were getting some runs in. And guess what? He goes, hey, the fat lady sung. You're done. And I turned around and I said, you watch. It is not done. The fat lady has not sung. I said, you watch. You're going to witness a difference. Oh, my gosh. That was our playoff games. We're going for championship. Those kids had already played a game before me because it's work. I felt bad. And it beat me. And I got there, and I was like, wow. Well, actually, this is a previous year. I'm sorry. I was not head coach in this one. Previous year to that one, okay? I was filling in as assistant coach. And I tell you what, what a nightmare. They, and guess what? There's a little more to the story. At the end, he threatened me. He said we controlled the clock. This yell at me. He said it's disrespectful for the children and yourself and this family. This claim that we had rigged the game the umpires and so an eerie wreck uh younger gentleman comes up and says do i need to remove him i'm gonna move him i hear him yelling and people screaming and in the family and they're all yelling at me and he said he wanted to punch me and kick me and it's out in the field and i said you stop it i said show respect for yourself these children we're trying to teach them about respect and honor and not about whether they won or lost the game i said no it stings but quit it you're embarrassing you're supposed to be a coach a coach of life you're out here screaming at me and yelling at me in front of people. And you, got, you got all those other people saying how we're unfair. I said, we're not unfair. The, the umpires control exactly like it's supposed to be. The time ran out. That's the rules of the game. Well, anyway, part of that happened that one of our pitchers, our fastest pitcher, the coach put him in there, and he knocked a tooth out, and they had to find the tooth, and we stopped the game for 10 minutes. We, I was worried about the tooth. They went over this side and told those people, I said, hey, we got to get him to a dental place. Right and he's goofing around kind of a little bit at first. He's like, screwing around. I said, you got to understand, this is, this is urgent. And he said, well, we'll got some, we're going to get some dentists lined up. I'm like, he's all like taking his time. He said, man, I don't know how much it takes to get, get him out there. Quit going. So anyway, so somebody holds him off, the young gentleman. I felt bad because he didn't duck. I told my kids, duck, don't take a tooth out. You might lose your teeth. And well, anyway, the, the pitcher, this kid, he didn't want to pitch you. We said, oh, my God, he knocked the kid's tooth out. He said, darn it. He said, I went out there, coach. I'm like, he's crying in tears. The head coach goes, man, he's our best pitcher. We do it at a playoff game here. He said, God, i got to get him out there on the field. He said, what do we do, Kirk? I sat there for a minute. I said, well, we can pull him because the other people are screaming at us, saying that, you know, get that pitcher out of there. They put him out there. He said, we're going to let him hit people, more people, you know what I mean? And he hit somebody else again, and they're just going to scream. He said, we told you to get him out of there, and you're letting him hit people. But then something occurred to me from my brother. There was a young gentleman that had kicked, hit somebody, and never played baseball again. He said that horrifying, similar story. 
I can't remember if you hit him on the ear and he bled out his ear, but I don't want graphic boards, teeth or something. But this kid said, I'm done. He was one of the best pitches out. I cannot play anymore. I hurt somebody. I'm done. Take care. So fast forward to the future here. I remember that incident. And I said, son, it's not your fault, number one. Just remember that. You did not do anything wrong. He said, yeah, but coach, I hit not. I said, listen to me. It happens. We all, it happens to us. It happens. Let it go. I said, we're going to put you back out there. You make your own decision. But I want you out that in that field and pitch for us. You do what you need to do, and let's finish this game. Because if I didn't, I could have had a kid that just gave up and quit and never played baseball ever again. I don't know if I had a professional player or something about that. Just not liking the game. I said, get out there and just do what you need to do. I'm not going to force you. I said, but just do this for yourself and do it for us and you'll be fine. So he comes down and quits crying. He goes out there and guess what? <laughs> I think he threw two balls that made me nervous at first because it wasn't calmed down, you know. But then he started throwing strikes. Bam, 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 bam. Are mean, you kidding me? He's winning this one like you've never seen. And I'm serious. The other side was like looking like, I can't believe these coaches put it back out there. Think they're going to hit our kids and this crap and that. But I'm telling you. And it's no disrespect to them, but you got to take risks in this life. There's nothing guaranteed. You know, and you're going to destroy a kid for his entire future that he can do this. You got to have faith in him. Like God is with us. Yeah, we make mistakes. So I've hurt people emotionally and put them on the wrong scripture. I said, oh, geez, oh, my God. I hope you can correct them down the road. That I sent them off to this new uh, New Age stuff. And I said, oh, my God, I hope they woke up because Kirk just shoved them down a rabbit hole that's going to destroy them. I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. And, you know, I've heard it many ways. I've said wrong things to the lady. God, I mean, there was a time I said some stupid stuff to me. I said, oh, my gosh. I mean, I mean, you wouldn't believe it. We're talking just not even religious stuff. I walked up to somebody one time because I was trying to read people, and uh, I used to be able to read people whether, you know, boy or girl, they're pregnant. I went to a lady in Boulder, and I said, hey, is her mother's there, and I said, hey, um, how long has she been pregnant? I can guess. Let me say about five. And the lady turns to me, she goes, what is wrong with you? Even her husband doesn't know. You shut your dick. Are you kidding me? I thought she was like, I thought he'd, she would told him. I don't know. I think she's like four or five months pregnant. I said, oh, my God. I walked away real fast. I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. Her mother, she, I said, oh, she did not tell her husband that she is pregnant. He just found out in a bar in a Boulder Auto Hotel downstairs in a dig bar. Some guy walks up. Hey, uh, how long are you pregnant? Uh, by the way, it's a boy. <laughs> her son, I mean, it was a boy thing. I said, how's the boy coming? And the guy's like, what is this? And I'm not sure if it was her husband or not. I mean, it could have been a boyfriend. And I, she's like, her mother's like, are you are you kidding me? So I'm sorry, stupid, not even religious stuff. I made so many bad mistakes, and that hurts people. So I hope that wasn't an issue for them. Oh my goodness! If it is, I hope something got cleaned out of it. That that was something that corrected that behavior. Something that needed to be done. It's getting like so I'm going to get some sleep here, so I'll be quick. I'm sorry, this is a long one too. But anyway, I'm like oh, I did so many stupid things because Kirk's confused. This whole world's a mess. And I just like run around, religious stuff, non-religious. I'm like, jeez, I have so much regret and guilt of those things. I was like, God, what have I done to these people? They're probably like, oh, my gosh, that Kirk J 